here we go. Almost 1,800 miles in uh, uh, five months. And I'm just gonna go over what I did to make this Can-Am Defender HD10, my new trail rig. After uh, totaling my Wildcat XX, I knew I didn't want to go back into such a noisy cramp machine, although the suspension was phenomenal. Everything else about it drove me nuts. Pops and rattles and super noisy motor, extremely hot cab, just wasn't worth it. And the first five miles of driving that thing, I just go, holy cow, man, this thing takes all the challenge out of riding because it's like a Panzer tank and just rolls over everything. Don't get me wrong, it's pl plenty of fun. Put uh, 5,500 miles on it, but I was done with it. So a little fender bender turned into a uh, pretty nice payout. And probably wouldn't have got another buggy if it went for her. She just enjoys it so much. Uh, wanted to get the three-seater. Here in northern Nevada, all the trails are super tight, rocky, switchbacky. Did not want a four-seater. So I knew I wanted something quiet. Uh, plenty of grunt. Lots of clearance. And the ability to carry a whole lot of crap. So the Defender met all those needs my first can-am and uh so far so excellent first things i did is uh put 30 inch tires on it and s3 springs to keep them up because i knew the oem springs were too soft and starting to sag after one ride so it did take a little while for those oems to or sorry the s3s to break in but now it's uh Plenty good. It's not a high-speed machine, but uh, we only average 20 mile an hour here on these trails anyway, so no big deal. And uh, the low-end grunt on this thing, phenomenal. I uh, actually quite like the front diff. Just turn it on and set it and forget it. And no issues. Never got stuck so far. Anyhow, what else I do this thing? S3 Springs is about, no, not so long ago, maybe 1,300 miles at a U-joint go. Ball joint, sorry, had a beer. So I put in the Super ATV adjustable Zerkables, and I figured while I was in there, um, felt some slop in the upper rear bushing so I put the Super ATV UHMWs all the way around. And those are interesting because they don't squish. The factory ones are like a rubber. So it really quieted down all the A-arms. I was pretty darn pleased with that, much quieter. Speaking of quiet, best thing you can do on these things is take that off the hinge and pack it full of uh, anti-seas copper preferably because they run dry and with a heavy bed like this one's got flexes and pops and squeaks and farts and pisses and moans down the trail and if you pack them you're good to go and they make some metal ones but none of them have zerks so you just got to take it off once in a while it's actually easiest to take off with the bed down undo the latch take out the two bolts lift the bed up a little bit it slides right out pack it up, put it back. I also noticed the bed was bouncing a little bit, so I took these, the front bushings off and put a shim in there. That's actually a piece of a vinyl flooring that I just cut, put under there and uh, re-riveted. That took all the flex out. And what did I do? Put a metal roof on there. I bought the fabric roof, but it uh, I tore that up. It's a really tall roof, obviously, and didn't do all that well. So this is a Rage fabrication. And put the uh, reverse lights and the annoying chase lights on there. And took advantage of the little uh, weird hole they had there. And put that in there, and it's wired in. Also, uh, they had some stupid logo right there. So I had a, a buddy manufacture a plate to cover the cutout logo. Put in a uh, 1600 lumen floodlight, which 
It's amazing, man. It just literally floods a good, I don't know, 15 foot perimeter around it. Got my official Golden Knights winch, 4,500 pound. Uh, I don't know, some Chinese crap I got off of Amazon that's good enough for the two times I'll ever use it. Wired it in here, the relays and all that, and I just put the uh, switch on the long cord that I can either use out of the vehicle or throw it over the half shield and get it. Velcro that in so it doesn't bounce around. Ran the rear wires under the seats, over to the pre-wired fittings there. Um, you can see those went through the frame tube down underneath under the slobber catcher there. I'll uh, put in these uh, little nets there to hold in clothes and gloves and hats and whatnot. Ram mount for my phone and GPS. <laughs> what else? Center, sides, and doggy uh, water, all important leash. Full size spare tire, all my repair and emergency uh, outage tools, and a cooler in there. I went square on the wheels, there's nine inch rims all the way around. And one of my favorite things about this thing is how easy it is to service. You can see the uh, oil filter there, the diffs are super easy to get to. Uh, absolute joy to service this thing. My last two side-by-sides, the, the Wildcat and the uh, Textron Stampede were absolute nightmares to service. Half a day to drain the oil. But love all the storage. Obviously the bed, the tackle box. This thing is absolutely loaded. Um, actually did not want the stitched fancy seats of hers her toenails would tear them up but 1800 miles no tears whatsoever just a nice protective slobber layer um, but yeah other than the uh, ball joints and one bushing and some squeaks not the only problems and I beat the living crap out of this thing and it's super quiet down the road there's absolutely no radiator heat because it's fully sealed under there so that they can run the AC. I keep the net on there to keep her in there on that side. And I got a passenger, I roll it up, tuck it in. Uh, you can see from the dent, I'm getting my money's worth out of these things as we're hopping down creeks. And that's about it. I really don't need or want to do anything else to this thing. Um, the DPS has a minimal skid plate under there, but I've yet to hit it. 1,800 miles and all kinds of creek beds, off camber stuff. There's not a scratch under there because of the 15 inches of clearance. Uh, I love this thing. Absolutely love it. This is the fast, rompiest unit. Hell no. It's enjoyable to drive. Dog loves it. She was losing their hearings. So well, hell, so does I. And the, the last two units were extremely loud. But with the uh, curved A arms, you just roll over everything. It's funny how narrow it looks, is it's actually a 64, which is perfect for this area. But because the cab's so wide with that three seater, it makes it look like it has a narrow footprint. But uh, it also looks very top heavy because you sit so high. But when you look where the motor's at and the bulk of the weight, it's not. I haven't tipped it yet. You know, with 10 inches of travel, I've gotten a little wonky at times when we'll be up off the ground, but just keep moving, it'll settle down. But yeah, I love it. Buy another one in the heartbeat. Uh oh, she must see a Polaris going down the road. All right, over and out.